For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture-related products and services. Call 465-1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. Test one, two. Yeah, there we go. Test one, two.
It's time for Paris Tiger Sports on the Paris Sports Network. Brought to you by First Farmers Bank and Trust, North American Lighting, Cornerstone Building Brands, Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home, Seed Solutions, Longview Bank and Trust, Moody Farms, Terry Elston State Farm Insurance, Alina EFS, Savoyas Pizza, the Edgar County Community Foundation, Country Financial, Lake Ridge Christian Church, Ingram Waste Disposal, The Skating Rink, and our affiliate sponsors, the Mary Lou Pine Family, Paul and Kathy Porter, Mark and Holly at Winans Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, and Steve and Lynn Young. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 2023 tip-off for the PHS boys. They take part in the Topper Classic up here at Danville Schlarman High School. Jeff Chambers alongside my partner for this evening, B.J. Pheasant. We'll bring Hello. You all the action. Yeah, the boys set to kick things off with uh, Bismarck Henning, a team that had great success last year and finished with a record of 27-7. and While the Tigers finished with a record of 13 and 18. Chase Brinkley's fifth year gets underway here on the 20th of November. Girls have already got four games under their belt, went undefeated in the NAL Thanksgiving tournament, winning that title. So now it's the boys' turn. Yeah, the girls did it in impressive fashion. We saw blowouts, we saw nail biters. They uh, did a little bit of everything. They played under the basket. They won games with three pointers. They, they did a little bit of everything you want to see starting off the beginning of the season. Um, the boys have got to do the same thing tonight. I think one of the things these guys have got to do this year is find an identity. You know, coming into the year, uh, got a few different guys in the starting lineup. What are they going to bring to the table? You know, who's going to be that go-to guy in the crunch? Uh, who's going to, you assume Jackson's going to be the guy. Uh, you get a press. Who do you, who do you want the ball in their hands? Um, Guys are going to step up, take those roles, and I'm excited to see which ones it's going to be. Yeah, if you followed us for the last few years, you're going to hear a lot of new names tonight uh, from the Tiger side of things. They're dressed in their all black tonight. They will be the road team here in this tournament. But, yeah, we will have a bunch of uh, new names for you tonight. Our returning senior is Peyton Langster. The rest of them are either freshmen, and we got more juniors you can shake a stick at. So we got a nice upperclassman mix here tonight for Coach Brinkley to see um, what he what he's going to do. You know, he's he's like the rest of us. We're all excited to see what's going to happen, and we are set for the national anthem and starting laps of the 55th annual Topper Classic here from Danville Schlarman. We'll keep it here for the national anthem. Appreciate you all joining us tonight. We'll update the tournament schedule throughout the evening. First things first. Bismarck Henning, being the home team, are going to be introduced first. Following the national anthem. We will be back after the playing.
That's your national anthem. We got that out of the way. Set to meet the starting lineups. First off for your Paris Tigers. Starting at point guard, wearing number one, junior Jackson Rigdon. Returning starter toward the latter part of last season. Drew Rogers, a junior, wearing number 10. Also a starter at a forward. Wearing number 11, another junior, Ty King. Jacob Staley is another junior, wearing number 12. And the lone senior on the roster, wearing number 22, Peyton Langster, head coach of your Tigers, is Chase Brinkley. Now, starting lineup for Bismarck Henning, Rossville Alvin. We will not call them that all night. They'll be Bismarck all night. That's a mouthful. <laughs> they got a sophomore starting wearing number one, Kaysen Peoples, a junior wearing number two, Micah Stanford, a senior, Aiden Ingram, he wears number three, wearing number four, another junior, Chaz Dubois, and a senior. Wearing number 15, Landon Lee. Not a lot of height on the Bismarck side. Not a lot of height on the Tiger side. Just a bunch of athletes out on the court. Expect this to be a track meet at least early on. And we are set to get the 2023 season underway. Drew Rogers will jump center. He'll go against Chaz Dubois. Could be Dubois. He's going to be Dubois tonight. PA guy said Dubois. Okay. We might both be wrong. Bismarck controls. They start the season out. Going right to left on your TV, on your radio. Fake shot by Peoples. Kicks it way back out to Dubois. Fake the three. Get to the paint. Easy layup that time. 2 nothing lead for Bismarck. They pick up full court pressure. Ty King all the way down to Staley. Staley is shot from the elbow. It's good. Jacob Staley. First two points of the night for the Tigers. It's a way to break that press, throw right over the top of them. Ty King did just that. Landon Lee hands the ball off to Dubois. Seems to be the guy that they look for in the corner. Casey Peoples faked the three, got to 12 feet, laid that up. Two nothing, or 4-2 lead for Bismarck. King right back to Staley, catches that midcourt off to Rigdon. His first touch of the season, gets to the free throw line, kicks it to Rogers down the corner to Staley. Apologize for the camera work tonight. We'll do our best to keep up with it. Rigdon got bumped Ooh. and traveled. That'll go as a turnover. It's hard not to travel when you get bumped like that. Yeah, he got knocked off his socks that time, did Jackson. Camera work will be a little tricky. Got us right down at the on the sideline tonight. We'll get some sweat drops on the lens tonight. Uh-huh. Just inside their foot on the line that time for Aiden Ingram, and Bismarck is perfect from the field. Three out of three. King up the left side to Rigdon in front of the Bismarck bench. He dribbles all the way across the top of the arc. A little hesitation move, kicks back out to Staley. Up top to Rogers. Rogers looking to dump, nowhere to go. Rigdon off the curl. Good move into the paint by Jackson. A lot of contact, nothing called. The shot would not fall. Kick out to... Ingram, and he's going to be whistled for a travel. Sorry you all missed that, but he did travel. 6-2 your score, Bismarck on top, 6-14 left opening quarter. King inbounds underneath the Bismarck basket. Rigdon breaks the press right back to King. No give and go action on the out-of-bounds play. Going to be called for the travel. I'm not sure he did, but sure looked like it from where that official is standing. Turnover number two. A third traveling violation of the game. Yeah, the old mind's out racing the body right now. <laughs> guys, guys are anxious to get out of their own gyms and see somebody different. Three-point basket on the way from Ingram. First miss of the night for Bismarck. Rebound for King. Dribble up left, gives it to Rigdon. Midcourt, crossover dribble, gets to the block. Great move that time by Rigdon with the finish. Jackson, quick as a hiccup, he got in the lane just a heartbeat that time, laid it up softly off the rim. Tigers trail by two. Kick out to Peoples. He fires a three, no good. King with another board. Rigdon up to Rogers. Corner to Langster. 
Back to Rogers up top to Rigdon. Tigers reset their offense. Good roll that time by Rogers. Shot hard off the glass. Rebounded by Bismarck. One and done for both teams tonight. There's a walk, nothing called. There's the three-point shot on the way from Lee. That's no good. King with yet another board. Up ahead to Langster. Good find that time. Great, great catch. Kick out to Staley. He is good. Tigers with the lead, 7-6. to six. Peoples gets all the way in the paint, kicks it out in the corner to Ingram. He knocks down a three. Both teams shooting pretty well for this early on in the year. 9-7, Bismarck on top. 4.20 left, opening quarter, turnover. Bismarck back in a hurry, and people just outraced everybody on the court that time. 11-7. Tigers had the lead for about 20 seconds, if that long. Now Rogers will bring it across to stay late. Rigdon gets it back to Langster. Curls just outside the free throw line. Shot off the back iron. King keeps it alive and gets the board. Five rebounds so far for Ty King. Three-point basket by Drew Rogers is good. 11-10, fast and furious. Peoples gets across the timeline. He's guarded by Peyton Langster. And it'll be a foul called on that one. As Landon Lee saw a little lane, but Jackson rigged and bumped him. That'll be his first and the team's first. 60% lineup change coming in now for Bismarck. They have three subs coming in. That adrenaline has probably wore off for those three guys as they're gas as they head to the bench. Nearly a travel there, nothing called. Ethan Dubois gets it now. He's a junior. Right off the bench into the scoring column. 13-10. King inbounds. Gets it right back from Rodgers and a throwaway. Turnover Tigers. I got him for four already. That's too many this early. Yeah, it is. 3.20 left, opening quarter. 13-10, your score, Bismarck on top. And King's guarding Stanford. Crossover Stanford, he gets the block. Blocked by three guys that time, but foul called. Yeah, take your pick of the Tigers blocking that one, but foul was called nonetheless, so heading to the line. For the first free throws of the game is Micah Stanford. Uh, they're going to get Ty for the foul. That'll be his first, team second. That was a clean block coming across there by Rogers. Bismarck's got a little bit of both going. They can get to the rack about any time they want and can also knock down that three. Tigers got their hands full defending this tonight. A pair of starters coming back in for Bismarck. 15-10. 3-10 left opening quarter. King to inbound under full court pressure from Bismarck. Rigdon's got it. Up ahead to Langster. Nice catch by Peyton over the shoulder. That shot's blocked. There's a foul call. Good job by Peyton sticking with that. He'll go to the line for a pair. Anderson Thomas picked that foul up. Hey, the team's first. First called. I always like to say. That is true. That is true. <laughs> So Langster, first free throw of the year for the Tigers is good. One thing you like about Peyton, he can catch that ball in traffic, and he's got a nose for that rim. Once he gets that basketball, he's a great finisher. Rolls them both in. 15-12. Clock rolls at three minutes. Yeah, he's picked up Peoples. He floats in the lane, misses, gets his own board. Peyton tips it out of there. Another offensive rebound for Bismarck. Three-pointer, no good. Rigdon with the board. Up ahead to King. We know he can catch it in traffic. Seen that all fall long. Good dish that time. Another foul on Bismarck. I think it's the same fella. Nope, correction. Chaz Dubois. Rigdon gets it top of the key. Hands it to Langster. Up top to Rigdon. Just inside the arc, no good. 
Peoples with it for Bismarck. A lot of one-on-one -on -one action here and a traveling call against Bismarck. I don't even know their mascot, BJ. Blue Devils. All right. Shows you how prepared I am. The old Blue Devils. Timeout on the court. It's on the score table over there. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, just pay attention, Jeff. We'll be right back after some messages from our sponsors on the Pair Sports Network. Farm Credit Illinois is a proud supporter of the Paris Tigers athletes and the surrounding farm families. Farm Credit blocks appraisal costs and lender fees and defends our borrowing members with free repricings as the market allows. Farm Credit helps farmers score with annual cash patronage. Team up with a cooperative helping farm families succeed and let us help lead your agricultural business to victory. Best of luck Tigers this sporting season. Welcome back to Tiger Basketball on the Paris Sports Network. Coming out of a 30-second timeout by the Tigers. 2.25 left opening quarter. Tigers trail it by 3, 15-12 against Bismarck. Lancaster inbounds to Rigdon. Gets it right back. And now Jackson's got it. Zone press this time, not man-to-man -man for Bismarck. Tigers break it. Nearly thrown away. Saved by Bismarck. Back they come in a hurry. A couple lefties out on the court now for Bismarck. Peoples kicks it out to one of the lefties. He kicks it up top. Ethan Dubois, crossover dribble, gets to the block. Nothing doing there. Chaz Dubois doing jumping jacks in the corner, finally getting him the ball. He's been open for a while, has Case and Peoples. Cannot knock down the three, and King with another board. King. Oh, my gosh, just miscommunication there. Finally get it across. Fishes gave up on counting because it was another turnover. Rogers will launch a three, no good. One and done for the Tigers. Peoples up left side, guarded by Rigdon. Down on the block, looking to kick it back out. They do to Kilimanic. Nothing there. I say we keep forcing them to shoot threes. They've only made one so far. King will be fouled right in front of the Bismarck bench. That'll be Chaz Dubois, his second. And as with every high school basketball player, they're in utter disbelief that they were called for a foul. Does the level matter? Nope. Like the higher you go, the more the disbelief. It's Peyton will inbound right in front of the Bismarck bench. Gets it into Rigdon. Minute left in the opening quarter. Tigers down by three. Rigged into Rodgers on top, right back to Jackson. 2-3 zone now from Bismarck. Tigers recognize. Get some penetration kick out. There's the penetration, but we threw it right to Bismarck. Another turnover for the Tigers. Nobody's stopping the ball. Peoples gets it down deep in the corner. He kicks it out. Shot from the elbow. Easy shot in basketball by Mike Stanford. Could not knock, knock it down that time, though. Rigdon breaks the double team. In the corner to Staley, who was cutting toward the basket. Another turnover Tigers. Three straight empty trip tricks for the Tigers. Carter Krippus will come off the bench. I got seven turnovers already in the first quarter. Ooh. They're adding up. And we're only down three. Yeah, cold shooting from Bismarck has been a, a big help on that. Tigers pick up full court pressure now. They kick it in the corner. As hot as these teams were early on, they've cooled way off in the last half of this first quarter. Bismarck pulling it out. Three seconds on the clock. A long three is no good. Stat stuffer for Rigdon as he pulls down the board at the end of one quarter. Tigers trail it 15 to 12. You're watching Tiger Basketball on the Paris Sports Network. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home is dedicated to providing compassionate and individual attention to every family they serve. Sincerely caring for your family's needs. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home proudly supports Paris Tiger Athletics. For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture related products and services. Call 465 1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use.
Located at the Paris airport, Seed Solutions wants to wish the best to all Paris Tiger teams this season. Contact Chip or Bethany Keys at 251-0153. Welcome back to Tiger Basketball on the Paris Sports Network. After one quarter of play, Tigers trail it by 3, 15 to 12. It'll be Tiger Basketball out of this break. Upcoming schedule for this week. Tomorrow night, Tigers will be right back here, same time. They will face Covington, Indiana before returning back to action on Friday night. They play the late game against the host school. Danville Schlarman wraps things up on Saturday evening at 6 o'clock against Milford. Jackson Rigdon's got the ball in the backcourt. Langster right back to King. Langster gets it back. Nice little give and go action that time. A little two-man game. King and Langster. Tigers down by one, 15-14. Pressure picked up by the Tigers. Broken just a lot of dribbling by one guy. Kicks it in the corner. Three on the way. No good. We'll just let him shoot threes all night. They're not going to hit him at this rate. King, nice unselfish play off to Langster. Might have been deflected a little. Had to be. He never shoots it that far into the rim. No. He's going to finish that time by Micah Sanford. Two points apiece for each club. 17-14, seven minutes left in the first half. Rodgers with a three short. Langster for the board. King thought about it. Up top to Jackson. He'll pull the trigger. No good. And over the backboard. Out of bounds. Seventeen fourteen to score. We've got a substitution in for Bismarck as Landon Lee will return. Just three seniors in uniform between the two schools. Well, neither team lacking in energy tonight. Not at all. They're like caged animals. They've been in their own gym for so long. There's a walk. Turnover number three on the night. Rigdon, nowhere to go. Right back to Langster. Ball's tipped. Jackson comes and gets it, keeps it alive. Tigers got to get it across. And it is the 10 second call, another turnover. This official on the far side called Coach Blinko with calling the timeout. We'll see if he was granted that timeout, and he was. So no turnover, just a timeout by the Tigers, so they'll retain possession. Six and a half left, first half. So we lost possession of the ball, but since the other team didn't take possession of the ball, the 10 seconds thing keeps running. That's the way I'm going to. Okay. That's the way I'm going to tell my grandkids. Yeah. You want to know Big difference between boys and girls basketball here. You see the boys, and they're in shock and awe when they get the foul called on them. How many times do you see the girls commit a foul and immediately put their hands up to their face? Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you rarely see that, but every once in a while you'll see an NBA player that was coached right that will yeah. get a foul called on him and will raise his hand. But more times than not, they don't want to be the guy. No, our girls seem to own it. Yep. You've earned it. Back in the backcourt. They get across the timeline. Ty King for an open three. No good. Carter Krippus off of his hands. King gets it right back to Langster. Kicks it out to Rigdon. Sorry about the camera work, folks. King. Going to be another foul on the floor. Tend to have three people at the home games. <laughs> Only two on the, on the road games. It does get hairy. Just bear with us. We'll bring you as much as we can. Uh, fouls on uh, Kel Kelamenic, his first. Rogers back down in the paint. He's got size advantage, but he's going to whistle or be whistled for the travel. Had the contact the whole time. The defender backed off, and Jackson, gravity just got him. That's, or, excuse me, Drew, gravity got him. As Tingley, or excuse me, as Staley will check back in for Krippus. I didn't even have to look at the number. I could see Krippus when I saw him. <laughs> Just like his brother. A quick whistle and a travel. All right. Oh, 
Number four. Peyton will inbound underneath the Tiger basket. Off a curl. Rigdon's got it. Nowhere to go. Dribbles back up top and resets. King gets to the free throw line. His shot is short. Pulled out by Bismarck. There's another walk. Yep, definitely the mind is out racing the body right now. The guys are trying all their uh, NBA 2K moves. And that they that are. They, that they've been playing all fall and summer. Uh, they're all jazzed up. they got the adrenaline pumping, and the feet just aren't keeping up. Rigdon off the screen from Rogers, around the right side, right in front of us. Kicks it out to King. Staley, an open three, no good. Good box out that time by Bismarck. One and done is the story for the Tigers. Streak into the lane was people's great find that time. Langster's got it. Reach in foul. You got the new foul rule, BJ. It's I don't have a full grasp on it yet, but I know it's by quarters. Yep. So once you get to five, it's two shots. It's two shots right away. Every foul is a two-shot foul, I believe. After the fifth? I think after the first. Well, that was a foul. Nothing was. No, we're not shooting. Oh, a shooting foul, I think, oh, is, gotcha. is two foul. Well, no, it would be anyways. Yeah, after five, I think, yeah, I think it's two shots instead of yeah, one and one. Yeah, there's no That's bonus anymore. Can't Turnover on the feel Tigers. Sorry for himself for missing the first free throw, so you just give him two. Yeah. Makes sense. 5 18 left first half. Tigers down by five. 19 14. They've only scored a couple times, or two points in this quarter. Ball goes in the corner. Kick the back out and off the hands. Good deflection that time by Ty King, and then off the hands of Peoples. Turnover Bismarck. They've nearly caught us in the turnover department. That's good for the Tigers. We've got to catch them in the point department here. We gotta let them catch us, man. Catch us and pass us as far as turnovers go. Get back in this thing. We're down five, four fifty left, first half. Rigdon trying to use the screen from Rogers in the corner. Staley, another three long. Langster there for the backside board, keeps it alive. To King, kicks it back out in the corner to Rogers. Three from Rigdon is good. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Jackson Rigdon. 19-17, your score. Tigers need another stop. And there's a turnover. Langster, the shot is blocked by Peoples. Kick him out. Staley, third time to charm from there. No. And good foul. He doesn't think so now. It is Jackson second, but that saved a fast break layup from Bismarck. We were two of three from three-point land in the first quarter. One of Seven here in the second. Yeah, neither team is shooting ball well from beyond the arc, as can be expected early on. Just cannot live and die with it, and Bismarck has a, done a good job of getting to the rack and turnover off the foot of Micah Stanford. Maddox Hutchings will make his debut in a Tiger uniform, taking the place of Jackson Riggin, who goes to the bench with his two fouls. Rogers traveled. I don't think he did. Wow. They'd ask me, I'd tell him, but I don't think he did. Bismarck has got it left side. Not no. sure they're going to ask you, Jeff. They won't. Aiden Ingram. Well, they find the smallest guy wearing the white. He misses his own shot and gets it back. We just stand around watching did Ethan Dubois. Two points, 21-17. Ball stolen away from Bismarck. And Drew breaks that pass up. Things are turning a bit sloppy here in this second quarter. Bismarck to unbound underneath their own basket. Micah Stanford, right back in the corner to Peoples, guarded by Langster. He gets to the baseline, no resistance there at all, lays it up for two. Six-point game, 3.20 left. 
Hutchings, ball up to King. King hesitation behind the back, back to Hutchings. The Langster, corner to Saley. Nice little give and go, Staley to Langster, two-point basket. And a timeout taken by Bismarck. We'll do that as well. 3.07 left first half. Tigers trail by four. You're watching Tiger Basketball on the Paris Sports Network. Cornerstone Building Brands is the largest manufacturer of exterior building products in North America, servicing commercial, residential, and repair and remodel markets. They're the number one manufacturer of vinyl siding, windows, and metal accessories, as well as North America's top choice in metal roofing and wall systems. With an expansive product offering and more than 100 locations, they're committed to providing high-quality exterior building solutions that their customers and communities can count on. That's Cornerstone Building Brands in Paris. Welcome back to Tiger Basketball and the Paris Sports Network out of the first timeout of the half from Bismarck. They'll have the ball right in front of their bench. They have a four-point lead, 3.07 left, first half. Peoples gets the ball across the timeline. Aiden Ingram a little hasn't to shoot that. Langster out ahead. Tigers do not have numbers. Rogers up to Hutchings. Maddox gets the ball off to Peyton. To Staley. Rogers backing his way, working on Peoples. Ty King with a wide open three is good. Ty King with a three point basket to get the Tigers within one. 23 22, and another travel. Boy, they're getting awful close to catching a speech. Oh, they are. They've got nine now to our 11. Ooh, those are both ugly numbers, but. Oh, another turnover. That'll create some separation. Peoples with a layup. It's just a pickpocket. Hutchings now handles the pressure. Foul called right in front of us. Hutchings behind the back, but he was hit hard. Did not get, or he got the best of that one. Yeah, he did. It's another foul. Next foul, Tigers will be shooting two. The remaining 204. Hutchings now with it in the backcourt. To Langster. Across the timeline. Dead man zone right there, trapped in that corner. Gets it to Rogers. And legal screen against the Tigers. That's going to go on Hutchings. That'll be his first. He had the spot, just kind of spread himself out, reached, and was guilty of that illegal screen. That's also a turnover for the Tigers. Bismarck with it and a three-point lead, a minute and a half left, first half. Corner three from Ingram is no good. King keeps it alive, knocks it out of bounds. King, Langster, Rogers have all been on the court the entire first half. Bismarck has got it, 90 seconds left. Langster guarding Peoples. No good, good box out that time by four different Tigers. Rogers comes away with the board, gets it to Hutchings. Ooh, nearly another turnover, saved by Rogers. Now Rogers has got it one on one. He's got room if he wants to go baseline. He spins, kicks it to Langster, who's cutting. Corner three for Ro for Staley. He's good. I had to hit one of them eventually. That's his second three pointer. Jacob Staley with a second three, and we're all tied up at 25. 45 seconds left, first half. Peoples shot fake. Three is on his way, and they angst quickly as Landon Lee knocks that down. 28-25. King nearly lost it. Rogers has got it. Hands the ball off to King, nearly stolen away. 28-25, see if Tigers hold for the last shot. 20 seconds left in the half. 
Rodgers says, nope, I'm going to hit this wide open three. Misses it, though. Now Bismarck with the last chance. 13 seconds. Five seconds left. Bismarck. Now they got attention. Peoples will take three. No good. Put back is also no good. We head to the halftime. Tigers trail it by three, 28-25. We'll step aside, let you hear from our sponsors, and be back with first half stats on the Pair Sports Network. So much to give, continuing what we've begun, helping our families to truly live. I will, you will, together we will show some heart, do our part, take a compassionate stand for good forever. For Edgar County, ECCF. Edgar County Community Foundation. Moody Farms of Paris is a proud supporter of Paris Tiger student athletes. Whether they're on the court, in the field, or in the classroom, Moody Farms wants to wish all of our Tigers the best of luck this year. Terry Elliston has been your good neighbor State Farm agent since 1981. They focus on auto, home, life, farm, and business insurance, along with financial products throughout Paris and the surrounding areas. Their mission is to put the interest of others ahead of their own. They're committed to doing whatever is needed to meet their customers' needs and to truly be a good neighbor by serving the community in which they work and live. Call State Farm for a free auto insurance quote at 465-8548. If you're looking for agricultural, business, or personal loans, Longview Bank & Trust has you covered. They can even help you with investment options and online banking. With locations in Paris, Crispin, Georgetown, and Marshall, they're always ready with the services you need. Look them up online at longviewbt.com. Make plans to attend Lake Ridge Christian Church this Sunday, either for their traditional service at 8 a.m. or their contemporary service at 10.30 a.m. There's something for everyone at Lake Ridge, from infants to the more seasoned generation. Visit their website at lakeridgechurch.org or find them on Facebook to watch their service each Sunday morning at 10.30. Stuart and Carol Funeral Home is dedicated to providing compassionate and individual attention to every family they serve. Sincerely caring for your family's needs. Stuart and Carol Funeral Home proudly supports Paris Tiger Athletics. Country Financial Representatives Mark Gladding, Jim Blue, Katie Schopmeyer, and Dan Phipps proudly support our student athletes. Give them a call at 465 8320 or stop by their office at 802 North Main Street in Paris. For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture-related products and services. Call 465-1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. Ingram's Waste Disposal offers residential and commercial trash pickup, commercial compactor service, roll-off service, and mini roll-off services. Call Scott, Kathy, Mary Jo, or Bethany at 465-3335. Ingram Waste Disposal, proudly serving Edgar and Clark County since 1950. The skating rink at Twin Lakes, formerly known as Twin Lakes Roller Rink, has been a popular establishment in Paris for over 60 years. New owners CJ and Mary Jo Becker are bringing new life to the skating rink with arcade games, a snack bar, TV hangout area for teens, and lots of roller skating. Stop by 1250 North Main Street in Paris on Friday and Saturday nights from 6 to 10 with a fifth quarter on Friday nights until midnight and on Sundays from 2 to 4. Follow them on Facebook for more upcoming events.
At First Farmers, we are committed to the communities we serve. For us, joining a community means more than just opening shop. We want to see businesses thrive, generational farms succeed, and local families continue to put down roots and grow. Whether you're looking for a farm loan, managing a business, building a nest egg for a new home, or searching for the personal financial tools that will set you up for financial success, we've got you covered. At First Farmers Bank and Trust in Paris. Family owned in Paris for 38 years, Savoia's Pizza is the place for real Italian food. Be sure to try their famous pizza nuggets and follow them on Facebook for their latest specials. Stop by 327 North Main Street for carryout or call 217-463-2500 for delivery. The Paris Sports Network would like to give a big thank you to our affiliate sponsors for their support of Paris Tiger Athletics. The Mary Lou Pine family, Paul and Kathy Porter, Mark and Holly at Winans Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, and Steve and Lynn Young. Farm Credit Illinois is a proud supporter of the Paris Tigers athletes and the surrounding farm families. Farm Credit blocks appraisal costs and lender fees and defends our borrowing members with free repricings as the market allows. Farm Credit helps farmers score with annual cash patronage. Team up with a cooperative helping farm families succeed and let us help lead your agricultural business to victory. Best of luck Tigers this sporting season. For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture-related products and services. Call 465-1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. Located at the Paris Airport, Seed Solutions wants to wish the best to all Paris Tiger teams this season. Contact Chip or Bethany Keys at 251-0153. Welcome back to Tiger Basketball on the Paris Sports Network. We're at halftime of the opening game of the Danville Schlarman Topper Classic 55th Annual. Tigers trail it by three, 28 to 25. Three minutes left in the half. I'm going to turn over to my partner, B.J. Pheasant, for some first-half stats. All right. Well, the Tigers and Bismarck came out running and gunning in the beginning. Bismarck led at the end of the first quarter, 15 to 12. Paris outscored them in the second quarter, 13 to 11. And that's where we sit here at the break, 28 to 25. Go down the Tigers for you first in case we run out of time. Okay, hit them. Jackson Rigdon has five points. Drew Rogers, three. Ty King, three. Jacob Staley leading the Tigers in scoring with eight. And Peyton Langster has six. And Tigers are shooting 33% from the floor here in the first half. 38% behind the three-point arc. They have 12 turnovers in the first half and are perfect two for two from the free throw line. For Bismarck, they are led in scoring by Keeson Peoples, who has 10. He's followed by Aiden Ingram with five, Micah Stafford with four, Ethan Dubois with four, Landon Lee with three, and then Chaz Dubois with two. They're shooting 67% from the floor, but only 15% from three-point lamb. That's been their uh, biggest detriment so far. They have nine turnovers and are also a perfect two for two from the free throw line. That uh, pretty much does it for the scoring there. The, the biggest telling stat there, I wish I could pull down rebounds. I can't keep track of all that at the same time. Um, but the biggest stat that jumps out is they're 15% from the three-point line. They have uh, just two of 13. They're 10 of 15 inside. They get down around the paint. They're hitting all those shots. They're knocking them down. But the Tiger defense is keeping them outside for the most part, and the threes aren't falling. I think if we can keep doing that in the second half, we can see some more success. Yeah, absolutely. We mentioned throughout the first half, they get to the rack just about any time they want. 
you know, on the other, on the flip side, Tigers have only shot two free throws. And I think that we've got to increase that number by a ton here in this second half. And then, you know, how you do that is you drive to the basket and don't fade away. You had a couple of shots blocked. It's going to happen. Can't let that affect the way you play. And we've got to attack that rim and get to the free throw line where, like you said, we're perfect two out of two. But you ought to be shooting, you know, four free throws a quarter at least in my estimation. Well, that'd be nice. Uh, Bismarck had six uh, personal fouls in the first half. Paris only committed three. Yeah, good clean defense yep. from the Tigers. We will give them that. The first 16 minutes to play. Hopefully the nerves have settled just a bit now for both teams. More so for the Tigers. We'll start the ball with, or we, or excuse me, Bismarck will start the third quarter with the basketball. And we're set. Final 16 minutes from the Topper Classic. Chaz Dubois in balls, or inbounds the ball to Micah Stanford. He runs things for the Blue Devils. He's going to get it back and shoot his first three of the night. Set up a good screen for him there. Rigdon in the corner to Staley. Back to Rigdon. Back to Staley. Been playing the opposite quarter than he did on the right-hand side of your screen in the first half. Seven and a half left. Just started the third quarter. First possession for the Tigers. Nice curl move and a good finish that time by Drew. Good find by Langster. Good finish by Rodgers. Tigers' first points of the half. Quickly up with it is Bismarck. Ethan Dubois cannot find a handle. He's starting the second half. Did not start the ball game. Impressed the coach enough that he's back out there again. Ball's tip. Peoples gets to the rim. His reverse layup is no good. Rodgers with the board. Up ahead to Langster. Langster thought about it. In the corner of Staley, he drives baseline. Back to Langster. King. Nowhere to go. Gets the ball to Nathan. Jackson Rigdon straight on three. No good right. Here comes Bismarck in a heartbeat. Peoples tracks it down in the corner. Crosses over, gets to the baseline. His up and under move is good. Good finish that time by Casey Peoples. He's got some ball skills, that's for sure. Tigers nearly turn it over. Rodgers corrals it. Langster hits a streaking Rigdon. He scoops it up and in for the score. Caught him sleeping. We napped a little bit in that second quarter. They got an easy bucket or two off of us. We return to favors. Rigdon hits that layup. Bismarck with it back. Flip the ball inside and count the basket and the foul on Ty. I'll be Ty's second. You're going to foul him, foul him, right? Don't let That's him get right. that. That didn't even affect the shot. Not sure there was much of a foul there, but Aiden Ingram ahead to the line for the end one. He misses it. They are struggling from the line. We can just avoid sending them there. That'd be great. Rigdon breaks the double team, but it's caught from behind. On the floor, guy on the floor gets the ball. Bismarck comes away with it. Peoples quickly lays it off. There's three from Ethan Dubois, no good. Cold shooting continues for Bismarck from beyond the arc. Three offensive, make it four offensive rebounds, and then a foul. Tigers not getting any second chance. Bismarck hitting Blue Devils, getting second and third and fourth chances in some instances. Do you know who the foul went on? The foul on us. Yeah, was that Jackson? That was Jackson with the reach. That's his third. All right. Missed another free throw, did Bismarck. 35-29, your score. Five and a half left. They missed them both. But they get an offensive rebound and another chance. Cannot trade that. Ty King leads everybody with rebounds tonight, I'm guessing. Staley's got it across the timeline. Tipped out of bounds by Peoples. Landon Lee, who started the game but did not start the second half, is checking back in for Ethan Dubois. Peyton Langster inbound right next to us. Rigdon sets up the Tiger offense. 
King to Rogers. Nowhere to go, not attacking the rim at all, or Tigers. Jackson does, though, kicks it out to Rogers. His 10-footer, no good. Rebound, Peoples. He, gets, he goes coast to coast, lays it up softly, and rolls in. Got no answer for Cason Peoples. He's just a sophomore. Probably a clean block, but a foul is called. Jacob Staley hit the line to shoot two. And then quick on the whistle tonight. Yeah, there's tournament whistles, and then there's Tuesday and Friday night whistles, right? A little yeah. bit more deliberate on the Tuesdays and Fridays. Tournaments, you kind of let it go, stay on schedule. First free throw is short from Staley. No good. Rigdon's got to be careful. He's got three fouls. we got 4.49 left, third quarter. King Garden Peoples. Staley misses them both. Bismarck with the turnover, and Tigers return to favor. Peoples has got it. He drives in for the layup. No good. Staley with the board. Langster. Bounces it right off our table. Another turnover of Tigers. Got us for three already, then for one here in the second half. King picks up Peoples in the backcourt. Bismarck will inbound, 436 left, third quarter. Tigers trail it by eight. Scored two points this quarter. Peoples. Across the timeline, picked up by King at the volleyball stripe. They're looking to clear it out for the sophomore. Crossover, not handle, could have been a travel. Everybody leaves him alone except for the rim. Two misses, King comes away with it. That should have been an easy two for the Blue Devils. Instead, King's got it. He's tried to finish, wild shot. He goes to the floor. Ball goes to Bismarck. And there's four on Jackson. Oh, man. Wrong place, wrong time for Jackson. He's going to have a seat for 356 at least. Yep. Big loss of the Tigers. That's the quarterback for the Tiger offense. He heads to the bench now. Tigers trail by eight. We'll see how that lead grows or shrinks. Hutch checks in for him. Now he's got it. Rodgers to Langster at midcourt, back to Hutchings to Rodgers. Langster off the handoff, no good. Well, one thing I'm noticing, BJ, is our passes are averaging probably about six feet, and that's it. Yeah. You know, we're handing the ball off. Credit the Bismarck defense for a lot of that, but we've got no flow to our offense. And we're just basically handing the ball to each other, and then that's easy for Bismarck to double team and force turnovers. Well, they've taken twice as many shots at the basket as we have here in this third quarter. Kicked it out to Ingram. His shot's no good. Only saving grace for Tigers is Bismarck keeps shooting threes. Tingley's got it. Tigers looking to cut into this eight-point lead. Do not want it to go double digits. Rogers out the volleyball line. We don't want him out here. We want him under the basket. A lot of dribbling. Finally gets his way in there. Good work that time by Drew Rogers. Blue collar bucket for Drew. Three minutes left. Tigers down by six. Wide open in the corner for three. And that lefty knocked that one down. Did Caden Kellemanic? Another turnover. Tigers and Peoples with a layup. Starting to get out of hand for the Tigers right here. Yes, it is. Cannot break the pressure, and a foul is going to be called. On Peoples. That's his fourth. 42 to 31 is your score. Nope, first. They just changed it. Cut it down to six, and in a heartbeat, it's back up to 11. King to inbound. Stuck in the corner once again is Hutchings. Nowhere to go. He's got Staley, but he's only about six feet from him. Just getting too easy for Bismarck. They're, they only have to move, and we're just handing the basketball to him. 224 left. Coach Brinkley takes a full timeout. We will as well. 44-31, Bismarck on top of your Tigers on the Pair Sports Network. 
Cornerstone Building Brands is the largest manufacturer of exterior building products in North America, servicing commercial, residential, and repair and remodel markets. They're the number one manufacturer of vinyl siding, windows, and metal accessories, as well as North America's top choice in metal roofing and wall systems. With an expansive product offering and more than 100 locations, they're committed to providing high quality exterior building solutions that their customers and communities can count on. That's Cornerstone Building Brands in Paris. We are many. Welcome back to Tiger Basketball on the Paris Sports Network. Tigers taking a much needed timeout. Had this lead cut down to six. And in the last 30 seconds, Bismarck has increased that lead to 13. It's 44 31, 224 left in the third quarter. Lancaster to inbound. Tigers got to go length of the court. Baseball pass up to King. Hits it off of his head through his hands. Down in the corner it goes to Micah Stanford. His three. Now they're starting to heat up. Hit two, hit the last two three point baskets. The deficit for the Tigers has grown immensely. Ten straight points for Bismarck. Hutchings, his first shot is no good. Langster with the board, out to King. He was kicked on the way by, but nothing was called. Now Staley, now Hutchings. Hands it to Langster. Staley, right in front of Coach Brinkley. Gets it to Rogers. Rogers guarded by Stanford. Rogers has got it about six inches. Stanford's got him by 50 pounds. Rogers fires a three in and out. A pair of Blue Devils fighting for it. They do come away with it. Stanford's got it. Kicks it in the corner. Just knocked one down from there and knocked down another one. Did Caden Kellamanic. 13 straight points for Bismarck and another turnover for the Tigers. Bismarck did return the favor, though. And Jackson's got to come back in. A minute seven left, third quarter. Yeah, the offense just loses a gear without him out there. 50-31, your score. 67 seconds left, third quarter. Up ahead to Langster. Goes up strong into the belly. Peoples forgot to shoot it, though. <laughs> now Peoples has got it. Down in the corner it goes. And Jackson's done. Rigdon's night is over. 54.9 seconds left in the third quarter. Ethan Dubois will head to the line. Not how you draw up opening night if you're Coach Brinkley or Jackson Rigdon. The fouling out in the third quarter. That's, you don't see that very often. And Bismarck makes their first free throw of the night. Might as well, they've hit everything else in this third quarter. And he knocks them both down. Back in for the Blue Devils, Chaz Dubois. Staley to inbound underneath the Tiger basket. He gets it back. King back to Staley. And turnover Tigers. Luckily, it was tipped by Bismarck. It will stay with the Tigers. Ah, I already marked it in ink. Well, there will be a turnover here in a second. You'll That's be all right. right. I'll remember that. Langster to inbound underneath the Tiger hoop. First guy through, not open. Gets it into Rodgers. Off of his hands and out of bounds. There's your turnover. Okay, I'll leave it. Bismarck with the basketball. 21-point lead. You're going to think I'm a liar for saying this, but three minutes ago, Tigers were within six. Dylan Blair will see his first action of the night. Checking in for Jacob Staley. Langster picking up Micah Stanford in the backcourt. Token pressure. 
Gets to cross the line. 40 seconds left, third quarter. Blair defends that. Peoples split the pair of defenders, kicks it out to Stanford. His shot's short. Good block out of that time by Dillon. Krippus up ahead to King. Down into the corner, back to Langster. 20 seconds left, third quarter. And reach foul. If you're wearing number one tonight, you picked up a bushel of fouls. Jackson, yes, yeah. Jackson Regan is out with five. Cason Peoples picked up his second. 14 seconds left. Langster to inbound. Throws it in the backcourt. King tracks it down. And that ball stolen. Telegraph pass. And Peoples finishes. Three seconds left. Tigers trying to get one off. Full court. They are unaware of the clock. Didn't matter. Tigers trail it by 23, 54 to 31 as we head to the fourth quarter on the Fair Sports Network. Moody Farms of Paris is a proud supporter of Paris Tiger student athletes. Whether they're on the court, in the field, or in the classroom, Moody Farms wants to wish all of our Tigers the best of luck this year. Terry Elliston has been your good neighbor State Farm agent since 1981. They focus on auto, home, life, farm, and business insurance, along with financial products throughout Paris and the surrounding areas. Their mission is to put the interest of others ahead of their own. They're committed to doing whatever is needed to meet their customers' needs and to truly be a good neighbor by serving the community in which they work and live. Call State Farm for a free auto insurance quote at 465-8548. Eight minutes left in this one. The Tigers have Mount Everest to climb to get back in this one. They trail at 54-31. to They do have the basketball to start. Langster will inbound. Gets it to King. Jackson Rigdon's fouled out in the third quarter with about a minute left. Blair goes to work. His turnaround left-handed shot is good. Dylan Blair off the bench with two. His mark goes to work. There's two starters on the floor for Bismarck. As you can imagine, the game like or with a week like this, as much rest as you can give the your players, the better. Another turnover for Tigers. Krippus contested that shot to no avail as Chaz Dubois lays it in for two. King to Carter Krippus, and he's going to be called for travel. Two touches for the Tigers this half, two turnovers. We got 10 for the half now. We had 12 in the first half, a whole quarter to go. Bismarck with the ball, comfortable lead at 25. Dribbling around the perimeter, Tigers defense not giving up. We guard well on the perimeter. Once they get inside that arc, though, we kind of break down a bit. There's a three-point bucket. Bismarck stays hot from beyond the arc. Got Blair all alone down here. Dillon catches it. Shot fake, up and good. Good find that time by King. Good patience that time and a steal by Tingley. Poked away by Bismarck. Carter Easton set to come in for the Tigers. A couple starters coming back in for Bismarck. So scratch what I just said a few minutes ago about resting your starters. Well, they're coming back. Apparently 26 is not enough. Blair, outside the arc, back to Langster. Eastham, outside the arc, 
looking for somebody. Gets it to King. King now takes off down the lane. He'll be fouled and head to the free throw line. One thing about TK, he's fearless going down that lane. They called it before the shot, so it'll just be out of bounds. It's the first foul of this quarter. That's the second on Anderson Thomas. Langster to inbound, 6.07 left in this one. Rodgers. Well, I get nervous when they float him like that. I do too. Easton, left wing to King. He's hammered. Another foul. Number three on Thomas. Langster to inbound, guarded by Lee. It's in the backcourt to King. King looking for teammate, finds Easton, dumps it down into Rodgers. He goes to work on the block. Good move into the paint by Drew. Good finish. That's the kind of power move you want to see out of Drew. Nope, fade away. Take it right to the front of the rim. Peoples. Started by Langster. He splits three Tiger defenders. Throws up a wild one. No good. Langster comes away with it. He stopped. Blair thought about it. Gets it back to Langster. He gets all the way to block. Lays it up. Blocked out of bounds, but a foul. I'd like to see a lot more of this the first three and a half quarters. Tiger's driving the ball to the hoop. And Bismarck will call a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. Kind of update, update you for the rest of the week. Tigers will be right back here tomorrow night at the same time. They'll face Covington, Indiana. Then on Friday, no games Wednesday or Thursday. Then on Friday at 7.30, they'll play the last game against Danville Schlarman before wrapping things up against Milford on Saturday evening at 6. We'll have all those games for you here on the Pair Sports Network. Make sure while you're watching to hit that notification bell at the top or the bottom of the video. That way you know every time that we go live. And it's going to be a bunch this winter with the girls and the boys. What we're going to try to do tomorrow is get the boys game here as much as we can. When we're done with that, uh, we're going to head up to St. Joe where the girls are playing. Clay Best will have a call for you there. That's a lot of basketball in one night. That's a lot. Peyton Langster to shoot two. First one is up and good. 61, 38 your score. We've, also, we've already outscored our third quarter. Yeah, third quarter was abysmal. Carter Easton with an offensive board. First offensive board for the Tigers in quite a while. Blair, shot fake inside the arc. No good. Rebound Bismarck. Double team. Here comes Peoples. Got to stop him. He doesn't know anywhere anywhere to go but the rim. Ooh, walk possibly, nothing called. Easy layup for Bismarck. King across the timeline, 450 left in this one. Ball's poked away by Peoples. Tigers will keep it. Yeah, number one on your screen is just a sophomore, so as long as we come to this tournament, we're going to see him for two more years. That fellow is not done growing either. He's pretty much dominated this game. That he has. Both ends of the floor. I've got him for 18 points now. And his night is more than likely over. King now with the basketball. Dribbles left up top to Rodgers. Langster wide open three. No good. Off the hands of Blair and into the corner. It'll go to Bismarck. Four and a half left. <laughs> Micah Stanford, the only remaining starter out there for Bismarck. That shot's off the mark. Dylan Blair with the board to King. His crossover in the lane. Gives it off to Easton, back to King. Looking for a screen or somewhere to go. Throws it off the hands of Bismarck and out of bounds.
Carter Easton to inbound. Ball's tipped and nearly stolen away. Blair tracks it down. King around a screen from Rogers. Just nowhere to go. There's a foul, nothing called. Now they're going to let him play. A late for that. Yeah, a little scoreboard non-call there. 25-point lead, 343 left. Now King picking up full court pressure, as is Langster. Blue Devils break it. Now the Blue Devils will empty their bench. Corner three, he's made a couple from there. Missed that one, though. King with the board. Got to be getting close to double-digit rebounds for Ty King tonight. Langster, top to Rodgers. Works his way into the paint, kicks out to Easton. His 12-foot jumper, no good. Pulled out from Bismarck. There's another kick out, another three, no good. Blair with another board. 250 left. Rogers. Shot fake, dribbles right. Back to Langster. His three is good. Peyton Langster contested three. And got substitution timeout on the floor. 236 left. Covington and Danville Schlarman Academy will play the final game of the opening night immediately following us. Two thirty-six left in. I don't see another broadcast broadcast crew coming in, so we should have plenty of time for a post-game interview. Yeah, we should. Hutchings checked back in. Staley's back in. Bismarck looking for their first win of the season. There's a kick out three, fresh off the bench, no good. Rebound, Blue Devils. Another three on the way, that time it's good by Chaz Dubois. 66-41, Maddox Hutchings across the timeline to Rogers. Wide open three, no good. Off Bismarck and out of bounds. Xavier Quinn will check in for the Tigers. Drew Rogers' evening is done. Minute 48 left. Quinn inbounds to Blair, could not finish. Bismarck comes away. Dubois right back in the corner. That shot's long, Blair with another board. Hutchings. To Blair, shot fake to the block. Good patience that time by Dillon. He'll be rewarded with the trip to the free throw line. Well, he's come off the bench and hasn't been afraid to just go right to the hoop. Yeah, he really lets the, the defender dictate what he's going to do with that basketball. Great shot fake. Has had some wide open looks. Knocks down his first free throw. 66-42, one, two, three left in the game. And second one is in and out. Another three from Bismarck, no good. Blair with another board. Blair earning himself some playing time tonight in the second half for sure. Come off the board for points and boards Good. for Coach Brinkley. Carter Easton gets down the block. He's going to be whistled for the travel. Everything was good except that foot move for Carter. Good up and up and under move. But shuffled the feet. 50 seconds left. Is Mark on top. We'll move to 1-0 and in tournament play. 
There's a ball stolen away. Staley. Got his feet twisted up. Could not finish. Bismarck comes back the other way. There's the travel. Just the way the game started, it's going to finish. Sloppiness, yeah, sloppiness, sloppiness. Of course, you got reserve players out there, I understand that. And nerves. So Hutchings, 20 seconds left. Blair thought about a three. Back to Hutchings. It's Eastham. 10 seconds. Off Blair's hands and out of bounds. Apropos, turnover Tigers, seven seconds left. And that's going to be your final score, 66 to 42. Bismarck will move to 1 0 on the season. Tigers fall to 0 1. And we'll be back after we hear from our sponsors with final stats. Also, work for Coach Brinkley. You've been watching Tiger Basketball on the Paris Sports Network. If you're looking for agricultural, business, or personal loans, Longview Bank & Trust has you covered. They can even help you with investment options and online banking. At locations in Paris, Crispin, Georgetown, and Marshall, they're always ready with the services you need. Look them up online at longviewbt.com. Make plans to attend Lake Ridge Christian Church this Sunday, either for their traditional service at 8 a.m. or their contemporary service at 10.30 a.m. There's something for everyone at Lake Ridge, from infants to the more seasoned generation. Visit their website at lakeridgechurch.org or find them on Facebook to watch their service each Sunday morning at 10.30. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home is dedicated to providing compassionate and individual attention to every family they serve, sincerely caring for your family's needs. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home proudly supports Paris Tiger Athletics. Country Financial Representatives Mark Gladding, Jim Blue, Katie Schopmeyer, and Dan Phipps proudly support our student-athletes. Give them a call at 465-8320 or stop by their office 1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. Ingram's Waste Disposal offers residential and commercial trash pickup, commercial compactor service, roll-off service, and mini roll-off services. Call Scott, Kathy, Mary Jo, or Bethany at 465-3335. Ingram Waste Disposal, proudly serving Edgar and Clark County since 1950. The skating rink at Twin Lakes, formerly known as Twin Lakes Roller Rink, has been a popular establishment in Paris for over 60 years. New owners CJ and Mary Jo Becker are bringing new life to the skating rink with arcade games, a snack bar, TV hangout area for teens, and lots of roller skating. Stop by 1250 North Main Street in Paris on Friday and Saturday nights from 6 to 10 with a fifth quarter on Friday nights until midnight and on Sundays from 2 to 4. Follow them on Facebook for more upcoming events. At First Farmers, we are committed to the communities we serve. For us, joining a community means more than just opening shop. We want to see businesses thrive, generational farms succeed, and local families continue to put down roots and grow. Whether you're looking for a farm loan, managing a business, building a nest egg for a new home, or searching for the personal financial tools that will set you up for financial success, we've got you covered. At First Farmers Bank & Trust in Paris. Make plans to attend Lake Ridge Christian Church this Sunday, either for their traditional service at 8 a.m. or their contemporary service at 10.30 a.m. There's something for everyone at Lake Ridge, from infants to the more seasoned generation. Visit their website at lakeridgechurch.org or find them on Facebook to watch their service each Sunday morning at 10.30. Located at the Paris Airport, Seed Solutions wants to wish the best to all Paris Tiger teams this season. Contact Chip or Bethany Keys at 251-0153. Welcome back.
back to Paris Tiger basketball on the Paris Sports Network. Tigers fall on their season opener by score of 66 to 42 to Bismarck Henning. Joined now by Tiger head coach Chase Brinkley. Coach, a uh, lot of opening jitters in that first quarter for both teams, not even just us, both teams. Uh, we were able to keep it close, second half or second quarter, much of the same. That third quarter just got away from us. Yeah, well, no, I, I'm excited about the team. I'm excited about what we did that first half and, and how we played. We played aggressive. We got the ball out quick. We got some easy looks. We spaced the floor out really well. Um, now, they missed a lot of shots. We have to do a better job of guarding and, and containing the ball and containing the dribble. They just got dribble penetration every time, and they're a really good team. They're a really good team. They won 27 games last year, and then they got the, the people's kid that's a Division One talent. He's a sophomore now, and he's just going to be a problem for the next two years for us. I mean, he's a Division One player, and he did what a Division One player needs to do in that second half whenever it's close and – he just, he just took over. I don't know how many points he had, but we had a really hard time containing him. Um, they, they do a really good job. Their coaching staff does a really good job of getting those kids ready. They lock in. They, they zip the ball, and they're always ready to shoot. And we just have to be, we have to be better. But, again, I, you know, I'm really happy with us. They're a really good defensive team, and we got open looks. We were cutting. We were making the right plays. We were sharing the ball. I mean, as a team, I mean, this is the best. I went into halftime saying this is the best I've felt since I've been here about us playing together and sharing the sugar and, and giving up a good shot for a bad shot. Like, it was um, it was really good, and I think we've, you know, this opened our eyes. I mean, they're, they're a 27-win team, like I said, and they're probably better this year. So, um, you know, I, it's it's good. I think I'm not hanging my head. Hopefully these guys aren't. We'll watch these. Covington, they're big, as you can see right now. But, uh, yeah, it's it's promising. We can get out and run. We just have to uh, have to guard. guard. Yeah, yeah, as you mentioned, you know, I know at least on four instances a give and go, which, you know, in the past we have not seen that unselfish play from the Tigers. You know, once the ball kind of goes to a spot, it kind of just disappeared. But, you know, the unselfishness of all the Tigers, not just one, not just Jackson, not just, you know, anybody, you can't point that out. Uh, but – there again, you know, our height kind of hurt us a little bit there. You know, credit to them for rebounding. We did not get them any second chance points as they were having some second and thirds. And, you know, that's that's going to be an issue, but it's going to be something that's correctable at least. Yeah. But with us spreading the floor out, going five out, it opens up those offensive lanes for offensive rebounds, those offensive rebounding lanes. But we, we have to be aggressive. We have to be more aggressive on that end. But really, it is a tale of – not turn it over, weather in the storm whenever they start picking up the pace. But you got to remember, we had our point guard and our backup point guard's a freshman. That's, you know, this is a first varsity game. This is the first high school basketball game that he's played. And he's thrown in because we've got our, our point guard and our leader um, in foul trouble. So that's going to be hard to weather a team that's up that aggressive the entire game uh, whenever you don't have somebody like Jackson in there. But yeah, we, we, it, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And, and that's when Bismarck built their lead was when Jackson was on the bench with his four fouls there in that third quarter. Mm-hmm. Had no option but to put him back in. And, you know, we were talking about it on the air. You know, there's there's Tuesday and Friday night fouls and there's tournament fouls. It seemed like a lot more Tuesday and Friday fouls were called tonight, at least on our side, yes. uh, as there were, you know, for any, anything else. But Jackson will clean it up. I got no doubts about that. And, yeah, you're right. We're a different ball club with him on the floor for sure. Mm-hmm. But – Again, I'm pleased with, with how we played, especially that first half. And, and I mean, I, I told him at halftime I was as excited about this group as I've been. There were some doubts with our size and our lack of experience, but you didn't really see that in the first half. Not we had two guys that have played, you know, significant minutes at, at the varsity level in Jackson and Drew, and that's it for our roster, but our guys weren't scared. I mean, I can't say enough about Ty King. He played almost the entire game. Uh, he was driving, but he was he was always looking to pass instead of exactly. shoot. He was giving up the good shot for a great shot. He was doing what you love, and then he was rebounding. And and that's what we got, because we got, we got Jackson, we got Drew, and we got Jacob Staley that can really shoot it. And we got Peyton and Ty who shooting it, they're capable, but that's not their strong suit. Their strong suit is being quick, driving, 
getting to the paint and then kicking and, and looking for those guys for open shots. And we did a really good job with that uh, in the first half. And then we just struggled. We yeah. struggled. Ty King did. I mean, he led the world in rebounds in this game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, don't, we don't keep that stats, but he led us in rebound. And off the bench, Dylan Blair did the exact same thing. You know, came in and gave you gave some great minutes, some points and some boards. So, And he's got the length and the, and the size to be a factor uh, definitely going on throughout the year. I know it's tough to – to set your starting lineup in you know, February, you know, setting it in November. But, uh, you know, you'll make some match and things will be good. And, yeah, like you said, that first half was, you know, we were right there toe for toe with them. Yeah. And some guys, like you said, uh, Dylan and Carter came in, big twin towers and stuff. And, we, and they, they earned some trust. And that's the main thing. If I don't trust you, I don't put you in. But they, they earned some trust. And the one thing with Dylan that he struggled with in practice is, is being physical and tough, and he did a really good job of that tonight. So we're going to probably need him tomorrow, as you can see these guys warming up right now. They're huge. They're so, monsters. <laughs> uh, we're probably going to need them. So anyway, we, we'll watch this game. We'll get a good game plan going, and, uh, and tomorrow's another day. We'll be right back here tomorrow night with you, Coach. I appreciate, appreciate you, you stopping by. Yep. Thanks, guys. Tiger head coach Chase Brinkley stopping by to give us his thoughts on the first game of the season for the Tigers. Once again, it's a loss. Tigers fall to Bismarck Henning by a score of 66 to 42. Turn it over to my partner BJ Feza for some final stats before we head out of here. All right, I can do that for you. Uh, things started off not too bad for the Tigers. We trailed 15 to 12 at the end of the first quarter at the half. Uh, we were still only down three, 28 to 25. In the third quarter is where the wheels fell off. We were outscored 24 to six that quarter. And then it just got uglier from there. At the final score, 66-42. We did outscore them in the fourth quarter, 11 to eight. Too little, too late. Leading scorer for the Tigers, Peyton Langster had 10 points. Uh, he was up, another bright spot, three of four from the free throw line for Peyton. So he led the way with 10 points. Drew Rogers was second with nine. Jacob Staley had eight, did all that damage in the first half. Jackson Rigdon had seven points and three quarters of play. Well, not even quite three quarters of play. Then it was Dylan Blair off the bench in the fourth quarter, had five points and three for Ty King. The Tigers only shot 37% from the floor, 33% from behind the arc, and they were 50%, four of eight from the free throw line. They did have 26 turnovers. For Bismarck, they were led in scoring by uh, Keeson Peebles. He had 18 points, followed by Chaz Dubois with 11, Micah Stanford with 10, Caden Kelleminick with 9, Ethan Dubois with 8, Aiden Ingram with 5, Landon Lee with 3. They were a solid 60% from the floor, 27% behind the arc. They threw up 33 pointers on the night. Only 50% from the free throw line, and I had them for 13 turnovers overall. So the um, the stats really paint a pretty good picture of the game there, Jeff. Uh, 26 turnovers to their 13. I couldn't hear the interview with Coach there, but when you turn the ball over that many times and uh, you do the other little things here or there, it adds up to a pretty big defeat tonight, 66-42, the final score. Yeah, Coach had mentioned that he was as pleased as he's been <clears throat> with a team in that first half, and they did hang toe-for-toe -toe with them. They and, did. You know, the people's kid is a D1 talent, as you know, just as a sophomore, and he, he put on a show tonight, 18 points. Uh, didn't play much of that fourth quarter, but, you know, Tigers had no answer for that. Uh, Tigers got to do, as Coach mentioned, a better job of rebounding and, you know, taking care of the basketball. But hopefully that will sort itself out. We'll find out. We got a really quick turnaround, less than 24 hours. We'll be right back here at Schlarman Academy as the Tigers host or will play this Covington team that's on the, warming up on the floor now, and they have got some monsters on that squad. Yes, they do. But we'll be right back here for the action tomorrow night. Lenny Irwin and Clay Bess will be bringing you the call on that one before we turn back on Friday night. So for now, from my partner, B.J. Pheasant, this is Jeff Chambers signing off from Schlamman High School. Once again, your Tigers fall 66-42. to Thanks for watching on the Fair Sports Network. You've been listening to Paris Tiger Sports on the Paris Sports Network, brought to you by First Farmers Bank and Trust, North American Lighting, Cornerstone Building Brands, 
Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home, Seed Solutions, Longview Bank and Trust, Moody Farms, Terry Elliston State Farm Insurance, Alina FS, Savoyas Pizza, the Edgar County Community Foundation, Country Financial, Lake Ridge Christian Church, Ingram Waste Disposal, The Skating Rink, and our affiliate sponsors, the Mary Lou Pine Family, Paul and Kathy Porter, Mark and Holly at Winans Farms, Tom and Marnita Stutt, Jim and Kay Taylor, and Steve and Lynn Young.